Here's a hand. Here's another hand. Therefore, there's an external world. That's Moore's proof of an external world. Convinced? Maybe, maybe not. In reality, Moore's proof is more of an illustration of a metaphilosophical point than it is a proof of the external world. That is to say, he's trying to illustrate to us something about the nature of philosophy and how philosophy should be done. In particular, the kind of goofy absurdity about, of Moore's proof is trying to show us that the whole debate about whether an external world independent of our minds exists is itself faulty. So Moore is calling upon a large tradition in philosophy descending from Cartesian skepticism, where Descartes' procedure gives us room to doubt whether anything outside of our own minds exists. But Moore asks us, what could be more commonsensical than that I have a hand? Nothing could be more commonsensical than that. My hand is not internal to my mind. It's out here in the external world. So since I have a hand, there's at least one thing in the external world, a hand. And we can go on from there. There's probably more things in the external world. Moore held that philosophical proofs cannot possibly overturn common sense. Because how could philosophical proofs overturn common sense if they could. Well, we'd have to say we have certain beliefs that are commonsensical, like that I have hands and they're in the external world. And we'd have to set a bar for knowledge and say that that belief in my own hands doesn't make it over that bar of knowledge. But how can we be more assured about this general philosophical principle about what knowledge consists in than we are in the fact that we have hands. So really, what the skeptic does is make us choose which one we're more confident in. Are we more confident that we have hands or are we more confident in the nature of knowledge? And it seems like, how could you be more confident in the nature of knowledge, which seems like a very abstract philosophical question, than you are in the fact that you have hands. So while some philosophers demand justification or proof for these commonsensical ideas, Moore is saying that they're going about philosophy in an incorrect fashion. The problem for philosophy isn't to prove or reject the assumptions of common sense, but to look at the commonsensical knowledge that we have about the world around us and explain how we could know something like that. So what philosophers should do is accept these commonsensical items and explain how it is that we know them. And the key to doing that is to analyze the propositions under question. So when we say, I know that I have a hand, the question is not whether I know that, but what exactly is it that I know in having that knowledge? That is to say, we need to analyze the statements that we take ourselves to know, hence analytic philosophy. So why does Moore begin his paper, Proof of an External World, with a quote from Kant talking about the need for a proof of the external world? It's not because he's going to provide a proof that'll satisfy Kant or anyone else mixed up in Cartesian skepticism. Rather, he's trying to undercut the very idea that a proof is needed and along the way demonstrate his conception of philosophy as an anal analysis clarifying what exactly is known when we know a proposition. So he'll go through and carefully analyze what the notion of an external world is, what it means for something to be external to our minds, and so on and so forth. And you'll see him cutting up these fine-grained distinctions as he goes. He's giving you an example. So he's working at this meta level where the proof itself, again, is an illustration of a point about the very nature of philosophy itself and the very nature of human rationality and what we can expect out of philosophy. 
in this way more cleverly reconceptualizes the logic underlying Descartes' cogito. Descartes argued that the most secure knowledge that I can obtain is that I'm presently thinking. And when I know that I'm presently thinking, I know that I must exist to do the thinking. Descartes then opens the way for a radical skepticism where some people say, the, uh, indeed, the most certain knowledge is knowledge of our own minds. But beyond that, everything starts to tremble into some degree of uncertainty, including whether there's anything outside of my own process of thinking. Moore will turn a cogito-like argument on its head and show that a cogito-like argument reinforces common sense rather than leading us into the quagmire of Cartesian skepticism. It's common sense that I'm a human being, I was born at some time in the past, I've existed continuously since then, that I'll die, and that I have certain experiences and beliefs that there are other human bodies similarly poised between birth and death, and so on. These are common sense. Now, there's no logical contradiction in denying what I just said, but Moore will say that there's a kind of performative contradiction that the philosopher who attempts to doubt or deny what I just said is engaged in a kind of pragmatic paradox. That is, from the fact that you deny those common sense propositions, you, it follows that you are wrong in denying them. So the very act of denial of common sense shows that you are wrong in denying common sense. Why is that? Well, what would the, the act of denying common sense be? It would be an announcement that you deny common sense, but an announcement to whom? To a community of other human beings such as yourself who have beliefs. The very fact that these beliefs need to be countered or denied implies that there are human beings with those beliefs. But that's just the, the proposition of common sense that Moore endorses. So Moore turns this cogito-like argument, which originally led to a buzzing skepticism in Descartes' wake, into the impossibility of even formulating external world skepticism.